What if no one shows up? <laughs> From the time we are little, we start to think about that. Like, what if nobody comes to my birthday party? What if nobody comes to my recital? Okay, that might be okay, but really, I mean, what if no one shows up? I have a friend who talks about um, the fear of missing out, uh, but really, what if, what if nobody is there? That is a fear I think that many of us share, and it came very close to me this summer. Amazingly enough, it got away and it came back. And that's what I'd like to talk about tonight. Several years ago, I learned about this program called I Can Shine. They have recreational educational camps for kids all over the country to make sure that everybody has a chance to participate without any barrier. They have dance classes, swimming camps, and a bike camp. The bike camp to me was incredible. I don't know how many of you learned to ride a bike or taught somebody to ride a bike the way I did, but essentially it's just you grab onto the back of the seat, give them a shove, and then say, don't fall over. <laughs> and for most of us, that's how we learn to ride a bike. But there are a whole bunch of kids where it's just not that simple. And if you stop and think about all the pieces that it takes to learn how to ride a bike, you realize that it's a lot more complicated than that. Where are your eyes? You have to look ahead. Where are your hands? Are you steering? Do you know where you're going? Are you ready to break? Can you balance? Who's behind you? What's beside you? How wide do you take this turn? Make sure your feet are going forward, not backwards. They have to go in a rhythm. When you start to think about all the individual pieces, you realize that it really isn't as simple as just giving people a shove and hoping that they'll be able to take off. I became aware of the fact that there's a whole bunch of kids in our community that have not had the opportunity to learn how to ride a bike. That makes a difference. It makes a difference when you feel like you're not like the other kids in your neighborhood. It makes a difference when you don't get to go to school with people who are riding their bike. And so I decided it was time to do something about that to change it. And I talked to some of the amazing people at Madonna and I'm a huge fan of the Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital here in town. And they said, after about a year of my begging, that they would underwrite the cost of doing this clinic. And it's not an insignificant cost. Um, they go to, I can shine goes to 34 states and four continents. They do about 110 camps every summer to help kids learn how to ride a bike. Madonna said yes. And they had one caveat. We will fund it if Cindy you will coordinate it. And I said, sure, that sounds great. <laughs> In retrospect, why somebody said, sure, that sounds great, while also, you know, working, having three kids, and deciding that because our daughter was graduating from high school, it was the perfect time to remodel the house. <laughs> uh, it seemed like a really, really great idea. Um, so I said yes. And then I said, what if no one shows up? First thing we had to do was find a place to have it. You have to have a gym that's big enough for kids to ride a bike. There has to be an adjacent flat parking lot, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought that shouldn't be a big deal. Any of you who have ever tried to convince an athletic director to do anything on their very precious wood gymnasium floor knows that it is not a simple task. But then I say yes. Those gym floors are like beautiful, polished halls of marble. And there's fear that somebody could damage it. So Madonna said yes in December. Finally got a school to say yes in April. And then the lawyers got involved. Um, I love lawyers, but my God, come on. <laughs> um, I Can Shine sent me a very standard contract, sent it over to Madonna, and it got redlined 15 times on every page. I was like, okay, we can make it work, we can make it work. Finally got a yes. For those of you that heard me beg about volunteering for the I Can Shine Bike Camp, I started being able to promote it 
May 11th. The camp was July 11th. What if no one shows up? So thanks to social media, I got online, created a Facebook group, created a Gmail account, started promoting it. I called everybody I knew. I sent a lot of emails because we had to have families. We had room for 25 kids. Amazingly enough, we didn't have any problem filling the camp because as I found out that there were lots and lots of families who have tried everything to help their kid be able to ride a bike. They've tried, their friends have tried, their family has tried, their physical therapist has tried, they've bought bikes with training wheels, they've bought bikes with adapted wheels, tricycles, you name it, they've tried. When the camp started, we actually had 23 kids register, 21 showed up because one kid broke their leg a week before camp and another kid just decided they didn't want to come. Okay, great, people showed up. One more thing you have to have, you have to have a location, you have to have kids, and then for every kid who comes to camp, you need to have two volunteer spotters. There were a lot of nights where I wondered if anyone was gonna show up. It's a scary thing to say, sure, I'll come run alongside a kid that I've never met who doesn't know how to ride a bike, and I will keep them safe. And oh, by the way, yes, I can jog along next to a kid for 75 minutes. Um, <laughs> You know, that's not like the best calling card to put out there. A lot of people are like, I, I can't do it. Um, and I understand, we are all busy. We all have multiple demands on our time. It is challenging. By the middle of June, we didn't have enough volunteers. By the end of June, we still didn't have enough volunteers. Here's what happens with the I Can Bike Camp if you don't have enough volunteers. You have to call kids up and say, I'm sorry, you can't come. And there was just no way I was going to be able to do that. Also in June, for those of you that, you know, ever read the comments section on Facebook or on the newspaper, there was just a lot of crap happening in the world. Uh, the Orlando shooting, uh, more bombings around the world. I know Sarah's going to talk about the refugee crisis, but it really got to the point where one of my kids said to me, Mom, is there ever a time the flags are not at half mast? And I said, you know, sweetie, it seems like it's happening all the time. There were days that I would get up and turn the newspaper over before my youngest would come down to eat a cereal because there were just things I didn't think I needed to have to talk about at 8 o'clock in the morning because it was just as bad. And then I started to think, you know, no one is going to show up at this camp, and I am really just kind of done. Like, the world is a sad and scary place. And then this amazing thing happened. People actually showed up. The first day of camp came around, and we it was like one of those really bad bar jokes, you know? We had a priest. <laughs> we, had, we had exchange students from Spain. We had theater kids. We had student council kids. We had baseball jocks. Um, all these people came and showed up and wanted to help make a difference. And yet, we still didn't quite have enough people. So that's when I started getting desperate and I'm like, all right, kids, here's the deal. Your mom's going to totally lose it if we don't have enough volunteers. <laughs> and so my kids started calling everybody they knew. One of the girls showed up to volunteer on the first day, hadn't got the memo about closed toe shoes. I loaned her my tennis shoes and ran around in my socks so that she could help a kid learn how to ride a bike. My parents came. My mom's Pilates teacher came. <laughs> <laughs> my dad came and was so excited about it that he called the news and said, would you come and cover this? This is an incredible story. So many people showed up. The next day, I had volunteers who couldn't come. And again, I was like, what are we gonna do? I put out the call. I had an off-duty firefighter show up. I had people who took time off of work to come. I had people who came. There's a young woman who's here tonight who came every day for every session. I don't know how she made it, but she did it. There were an incredible group of people who came to be a part of this. And it was really unbelievable. On the first day, um, kids got on a set of adapted bikes that have a set of interchangeable cylinders. So it makes this stable bike. It looks like a regular bike, except on the back there's a cylinder. 
And as they get comfortable, you slowly change it out to a more narrow, more narrow cylinder until they're riding. And then they get on a teaching tandem. They do all sorts of different techniques to help break down this skill. Families were blown away. Families who didn't think they would ever see their kid learn how to ride a bike were getting to watch their kid. And in fact, you could tell when the kids got a little more confident because they started getting a little sassy with their parents. <laughs> uh, it was great. It was absolutely unbelievable. Um, we had a couple of kids who got scared. We had one kid that ran into the bathroom and hid. Um, a great Lincoln High student council member spent most of the 75 minutes in the bathroom trying to coach him out of there. Um, and he had only signed up to help for one day. He came back again. Um, people kept coming back. They were like, this is amazing. And on the last day, 16 of the 21 kids rode their own bike independently for at least 75 feet. There's a young girl who was hit by a semi in a car. She was a passenger in a car, was hit by a semi. 18, not even 18 months ago, it was about 16 months ago, she'd been in a coma and on a ventilator. She had not been able to swallow a pill or drink more than 10 ounces at a time since the accident. Somehow the people at Madonna convinced her family that she should be a part of this camp. Something triggered in her brain that she had once known how to ride a bike and that motion of getting on, pedaling, having people next to her, cheering her on, triggered connections that allowed her not only to ride a bike independently by the end of the week, but she swallowed a pill, she drank 40 ounces, she told her grandpa that for the first time she felt like a normal kid. It was absolutely unbelievable. Some of you know some of the kids who are at that camp. There's a young man who's riding on the bike trails every day to Southeast High School. He got, to be, he got a chance to learn how to do that because people showed up. It was an absolutely unbelievable week. Several of you that are in the room were a part of that, and I am forever grateful. It was a really, really amazing opportunity. Sometimes it gets hard, and we think no one's going to show up. And you know what? Love always wins. That's what Megan had to say, and I believe that so much. But it's really easy to forget. But what happens if you wait and you look is that your friends and your family will be there to remind you, and that makes all the difference. Thank you for showing up.